start another tutorial. This one's going to be called the Jigsaw Puzzle. This is a fun one. People like this one because then you can do a lot of stuff with it. Um, you're going to want to download the solution for this one as well because this one, the solution's going to have the images in it. The Jigsaw Puzzle has a 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, has some images in it. We're going to need to use, I'm going to recycle those images. So go to behecker.com and uh, in the Objective C class under source code examples where we found the tutorial, this one's called Jigsaw Puzzle Tutorial. Make sure to get the jig Jigsaw Puzzle solution. Otherwise, you're going to need to figure out how to make the Jigsaw Puzzle pieces. And you'll see how that works in a few minutes here. In fact, I'll show you how to do it as well so you can make your own Jigsaw Puzzle, which, you know, if you're bored, it might actually be a fun thing to do. So. All right, and you could do this for the last assignment when you're going to make, create your own GUI application. If you're so inclined, you can make your own jigsaw puzzle if, uh, if that's something you want, want to do. It's kind of a fun thing to do. All right, so I'm going to open up the tutorial file. Here it is. This is using the touch controls. So we have touch, drag, move controls on the back of the canvas on the phone. Uh, so. We're going to call, I'm going to call mine Jigsaw Puzzle. It looks like it's called Touch Control, the sample project, but it doesn't really matter what we call it. So let's go ahead and open up a single view application. So go into Xcode. Here we go. I accidentally clicked on VirtualBox. So let me close that. I have Xcode open. And I create a new Xcode project and a single view application. I'm going to try and go slow enough so that everyone can follow along. When uh, a word of advice from the break, actually, when I went around to look at your computers, people are calling things different names. They're not using case sensitivity. Um, if you don't use exactly what I'm telling you to use, you're going to have a problem and you'll have to change the code to match what it is you are using. So if you want to have success with this, case sensitive, everything is case sensitive, <laughs> and make sure to label things correctly. So I'll try and go slow enough, and I'll try to point out case sensitivity so we can hopefully have better success with this one, because this one's a fun one. All right, so single view application. Go ahead and click on Next. I'm going to call this one Puzzle. If you call it something else, then you can bring up the original puzzle. If you call it Jigsaw, or you call it Control, Touch Control, if it matches the original file that you downloaded, you're going to have a problem if you load up both projects. So call it something unique. Okay, <laughs> so go ahead and click on Next. I'm going to save mine to the desktop. Go ahead and press on Create. Okay, so now I have the empty project created. Let's take a look here then. Expand the classes out, and notice we have an interface builder. This is an old tutorial, so it's definitely mentioning the nib and the XIB. We don't have that anymore. We have the main storyboard. So I'm going to have to ad lib a little bit from this tutorial. Uh, but open up the view controller. Dot, well, 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 let's just open up the, um, the main storyboard. We're going to need to drag four image views from the library and place it on the view. And so when we drag the four image views of our choice, we're going to copy it into the project. We're going to copy four images into the project. We're going to put the images inside of the image view. And then we're going to select the image views and then, uh, you know, this is what basically what it's going to look like is right here. So go ahead and uh, go back to Xcode. Click on the main dot storyboard. I'm going to change my background color because I like the green. You know, so we're on green now. And on the bottom in the library, type in image view. We're dragging four. We have four pieces. We're going to drag four image views and stick it on the canvas. When we drag it over, we have this happen. We don't want to fill up the whole thing. We want four puzzle pieces. So if we drag it in, you need to resize the puzzle piece. So I'm going to make my puzzle pieces like this, actually. One, two. I make them all the same size. One, two, three.
for. The tutorial probably says what size to make them, but I don't know if it really matters, actually. In fact, you could make one and then cut and paste the other ones, and they would all be the same size. So these look pretty good. So these are my puzzle pieces, and the concept is we're going to drag the pieces and put them to make a puzzle. It's a jigsaw puzzle. So I only have four pieces, though, which is, you know, kind of the most ironic part. Um, so now I'm going to take and find my pieces and put them into the project because I want to put the pieces in the image view. So I need to go back now out to the downloaded file that I had, which is why I told you to download the project. Double click on Jigsaw Puzzle, double click on Touch Control. See, I have the 1, 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B. Those are my four pieces. So I'm going to show you how to drag them into the project. If you click on the project, here actually we'll get both screens this way. You can click on 1A as an example, drag it over into supporting files. Or if you wanted to, you could put it in the main puzzle. It doesn't really matter where you put it. Actually, I'm going to put it in the main puzzle. So I'm dragging and I'm dropping. And then over here it's going to say copy item into destination folder. You want to copy it, otherwise you're going to link the file and it's going to be stuck in a different folder. So where it says copy items, make sure that this box is checked. And we're going to add to targets puzzle. This is the puzzle that I created. And then press on finish. And you see that the puzzle piece shows up here. Yes, I'm going to do it again. Go to the downloaded project with the puzzle pieces in it. Have you gotten that far? Take the puzzle piece, click on it, drag it over to the puzzle directory, let go. See where it says, make sure you have copy item into destination groups folder selected. And create groups, well it doesn't really matter what the folder here says, just click on finish. Now we have 1A and now we have 1B. Do it for all four pieces. Here's 2A and 2B. You can actually drag them all and put them all in there if you wanted to, all in one shot. I'm just doing them individually so you guys know what I'm doing. Did we get the pieces in? Here, let me pause for a second. Okay, so hopefully we have our pieces in. There are four pieces. Let me show you how I made the pieces so you have an idea. If you have a MacBook, you have a program called Preview in there. Preview is fantastic, actually. Um, why is it fantastic? Let me show you. Uh, so if you don't like these pieces, you want to make some other pieces. You go find an image on the Internet. In fact, I'm just going to do one right now. I'm just going to go in here and find, um, I don't know, um, butterfly. Butterfly. And then uh, click on images. Oops, that's maps. Excuse me. Uh, images. Here we go. And then uh, here's a cool butterfly. Well, here's a butterfly. So I'm going to save this one to my uh, save image as. I'm saving it to my desktop. And uh, if I double click on this butterfly out here, it brings it up in a program called Preview. What I did to make those pieces is exactly this. I downloaded an image. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select pieces of it. So I'm going to put my mouse up here on the right hand side over here and go like this. <laughs> if you watch, if you look at the mouse down here, it says 866 by 345. So you measure it out. So this whole thing appears to be well, 1590. Well, this little space here, you know, appears to be this dimension. Divide it out, go like this, edit, copy, copy, so pick your area, edit, copy, file, new from clipboard, and then paste, or save it. Actually, all I did was save it, and then I called this one 1A, save. So now I have 1A, which is this upper right-hand corner. Well, actually, I selected the whole thing, but yeah. Yeah, so select the area, then go into File and select, excuse me, Edit, Copy, and then File, New from Clipboard. So you're copying it to the clipboard, 
and then you're going to new from clipboard, creates the new image, and then save it. That's how I broke up those other pieces. Unfortunately, you've got to take the size of it and divide it out. How many pieces do you want? And then go by the measurement, because you're still back to the original here. So I'm not going to save this one, but I have this original here. Get rid of this here. I don't save. There we go. Now I can like draw another one here. So I got one piece, right? So I can go here. And now I got this second piece here. <laughs> you don't necessarily have to make the same pieces the same size. In this particular case, I didn't. But that's what, essentially what I did to make those four pieces. And I labeled them 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, so I know how they would go together. So what I'm going to do then is come back up to the project. And we're going to see how we're going to put the images inside of the image views. So you should have one, two, three, four pieces. If you use these pieces, you've got the full puzzle. Now you're going to click on the main.storyboard. Click on the image view. Come up to the right-hand side of the screen here to the properties, attribute inspector, excuse me. And where it says image, you should see 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B. So go ahead and put 1A in one of them. <coughs> Click on the next one, 1B, 2A, and 2B. So if I put my puzzle together, it actually looks like this. It's a, it's a picture of a little phone, actually. Let's see. It's like a baby tablet or something. I don't know. It's the smiley face. There we go. My pieces go together. <laughs> I actually put the original one in here. This is the original, happy.png. Because um, if you want to, actually, you can put that maybe as the app icon or something if you wanted to. But you don't want to give the user the puzzle already created. So mix the puzzle up. Like put it down here. There we go. So mix your pieces up at least so it looks like, you know, you have a little bit of work to do to put the pieces together. And then if you wanted to, you can come down here, let's say, for example, and give the user um, a, the finished picture to look at. So if you wanted to, then drag the finished icon and put the finished icon in here. This one's called happy.png. And then... Uh, you could uh, drag another image view, put it on the bottom perhaps, and then put happy in here. And then, uh, let's see, we'll just do like this. You can put a little label in here. I'll put a label in here. I'm just kind of playing around with it right now. And uh, my label here is going to say uh, finished, finished puzzle. <laughs> just in case my my user can't figure out what the finished puzzle is supposed to look like. <laughs> Here we go. This is what the finished puzzle looks like. So I'll stick it down here. There we go. So the user knows that they're supposed to move these things around and they'll make the finished puzzle. So did I waste enough time so we are all on the same page now? We all have our images in our image views and we have our puzzle pieces out there. You don't have to do this part down here. I just did that to kind of fill some time to give you guys some time to catch up. Okay, so let's go back to this tutorial. Let's take a look here. So you're going to put the image in for each one of the image views. Now we have to enable the user interaction. So there's a little button here that says user interaction enabled which is going to allow us to actually touch the images, move the images around. So make sure we have that in the view selected. So click on the first one, and you see down here it's not selected by default. So go ahead and select the user interaction enabled for each one of the images. Now I'm not going to select this one down here because this is my finished product. I don't want them to be able to move that one around. But these guys, I want the interaction enabled. So go ahead and click and make sure you have the user interaction enabled for all of the images that you want them to be able to interact with. You can do that at the same time that you set the images themselves if you want. Or you can do it you know, a different time if you want. It depends. So, um, so let's see. Now that we have the user interaction enabled, 
right here. Now we're going to open up the view controller and we're going to create four image variables as follows. So we're going to, I'm just going to copy and paste and put this in here. We're going to create image one, image two, image three, and image four. If you copy and paste and you put this in here, you'll be labeled correctly. Basically, we're going to see if we can get at what these images are programmatically, which is why we're putting them in here. So I'm going to get rid of the side piece, open up my little tuxedo icon, make sure I'm in viewcontroller.h. At the top of the code, I'm going to put my four images in here. And my four images, I just pasted them in. They have one, two, three, four images. This will, in, this will guarantee that our numbers are actually, that our labels are actually correct. If you copy and paste the code from the tutorial, right here, put it in viewcontroller.h, then we're going to wire the IB outlets, wire the images to the labels. So each one of the labels on the canvas wire the connection. So just click on the empty circle and drag it to the image. So click on the empty circle. This is number one, or 1B. It doesn't really matter which one is which one. 1B, 2, 3, 4. <laughs> doesn't matter which one is which one. You have four images. Make sure they're all wired separately. So you have four images on the canvas, and you have four labels. And make sure your bubbles are all filled in. So when you highlight it over, you got four different images out there. We get that far? No? Okay, hold on one second. Let me pause it. All right, so I think it's time to move on. We've got our images wired. Now you notice we didn't do properties out of this, so we're not. Gonna, we're not. Well, we didn't do properties for a couple reasons. First of all. We don't have to set the text, get the text. We don't necessarily need property and synthesize with this. All we need is a way of getting at the image. So if the image moves, we can figure out what coordinate it's at and take it and move it around. Actually, we can move these around programmatically if we wanted to by having a button that says, you know, put it together or something, which we didn't do, but you can add this to the project if you wanted to. All right. So wire one of the IB outlets to each one of the images. We have that done. And now we're just going to move on to the .m file, so viewcontroller.m. We're going to add a method now, and the method is going to be to move the images around as follows. So this one's going to be on touches moves, and uh, touches with event, so we have the UI event. So this is the event driven part of the built-in functionality that we get with the touch controls. We don't have to add anything to the project or anything, we automatically get this. So the, the kind of the method, the mystery method is called touches moves, which means when you touch it, we're going to move the image. So it's an automatic control. So you can see what happens when we put it in here. But you're going to get the touch event. So it's going to be a UI touch is the name of the object. And we have an asterisk because we're making an instance of the object. It's going to be called touch. And it's going to be on all of the touches on the events on any object. So regardless of what you touch on any of the objects, it's going to pick up the event. And then now we're back to the CG point. Well, the CG point is a data type for a two-dimensional two -dimensional CG graphic point that's going to give us our touch location. So we're going to move from one location to another location so we can drag and drop the pieces, um, which might be fun if you have an iPod set up or an I, um, iPhone setup, you can actually run it on the, on the device and it should work. So if the touch is on a view and it equals an image, so remember introspection, when all everything was a subclass of view and we were able to see what we were touching on, so now we're using that to our advantage here because we're going to say if it's an image one on the view, because we have it labeled, we have it wired to image one, then get the image one dot center as the touch location and move with that. Else if it's image two, then take that location. Else if it's image three, it doesn't really matter which one it is. It's going to be one of the one, two, four. So go ahead and put this in the body of the view controller dot m file. So believe it or not, this is a very simple app. That's why I say you might have some fun with this one later on. Uh, so view controller dot m 
And I'm going to stick it right at the top, actually. I'm going to stick them right up here at the top. And uh, if I wanted to have more pieces, I just add more images. And um, I add more touch controls for the images. So if I look at this here, I've put the controls in here on the touches moves, on the touches with event. So it's automatically going to pick up the touch event for me. Now, according to my instructions, let me just make sure I haven't left anything out. It says compile and run the app. And you should be able to do the before with the after. So let's take a look. I'm going to run it. And so the automated touches move background touches event enables me to pick up the location of where I've touched. So if you know it's working, when you can touch and move. So you should have a fully running jigsaw puzzle right now. Although now you have to figure out how to put the pieces together. And uh, here we go. My pieces were not what I would call exact. You can overlap them a little bit. There we go. Yeah, my pieces were not the most accurate. <laughs> but, oh, there we go. Just overlap this guy a little bit. Hmm. Move this guy down a little bit. Well, it's kind of perfect, sort of perfect. If you come down here, oops, it fell off the screen. My image down here is not movable because I don't have it. I don't have the sensor on the image. But I do have it up here, so you should be able to move your pieces around. If you put it on a real phone, it's really cool. You can put your fingers on it and move it around with your fingers. Is yours working? <laughs> okay. All right, very good. So you can see, if you wanted to expand this with more pieces, you add more image views to it. So if you have a really big piece of uh, image that you'd like to work with. Um, actually, here, let me, uh, let me move my other image up so you can see what's going on with this. Uh, because my screen was too wide for my emulator, this bottom puzzle piece was off the screen. So if I move it up a little bit and then I run it so it's actually on the screen, you'll see that this piece won't move because I don't have an image touch controller. See here? This one won't move. But this guy will move and this guy will move. And the reason why it jerks a little bit is because it's finding the center location and it's centering the piece on the mouse touch. So when we touch it, you see it kind of it kind of jerks a little bit in the beginning. You can probably fix that if you wanted to um, by making it so it doesn't, I mean, if, unless you click in the middle, then it doesn't jerk. But if you click on the side of it when you move it, it moves to the center of wherever you clicked because it's picking up the center location. And the code that's doing that, just to refresh your memory, is this one little method. This is everything having to do with the technology of that touch control. And it's a gesture that's automatically, or it's a control that's automatically on the view. So we're inheriting from the touch, so we have the touch moves that gives us the move event. So get the touched images here for image one, two, three, and four. So if we have more images, we just add more tests on here. So what you could do is modify this one actually to put the pieces together if you wanted to. If you have the coordinates, you know how big the pieces are. You could just have a button maybe on the interface that says, okay, fix it, <laughs> build the puzzle if you wanted to. That would actually be an easy addition to this. Or you could just leave it as is and just put different puzzle pieces in there. So, and the puzzle pieces will go the entire um, view. So if you want, it, when you want to make it smaller, put a sub view in there. As an example, what we saw views with the other day, if we look at, uh, yesterday I should say, if we look at the storyboard again, if we drag a view over there, let's just take a view down here. View. And we stick a view in here. Uh, let's just call it a regular old view here. Text view, map view, scroll view. Uh, view. Put a little sub view in the view. And we stick some stuff in the sub view. Like we drag this guy and we stick him in here. And then we run it. We see that, oops, well, 
it's moved out here. <laughs> so we can't go from view to view. So our functionality is like stuck. Oh, it's behind the view. But uh, and let me run it again so you can see what happened with that. Actually, let's just do this. I'll make this bigger. Uh, let me just check something real quick. Okay, good. Very good. So this one is the lower left-hand side of the view. So you see it's inside of this other view. And when I clicked on it, it went away because it's actually underneath the view. So anyway, little tricks you can play with different views. If you wanted to move the puzzle pieces, you want to change the control to the other view is what you want to do. And then wire this other view. And then you'd have a puzzle inside of a puzzle if you wanted to. But most people are just going to play with it this way, probably. So, All right. Questions? Do you all have working jigsaw puzzles? No? <laughs> yeah. All right. So let me stop this video. Uh, and let's just make sure there's nothing left here in terms of the explanation. Now, if you load up the sample, let me show you something else, actually, because I've had some people look at this already. If you load up the sample project here on the touch control, it might actually tell you, no, this one's not going to do it because it's on my computer. It might actually tell you that it's certified or that it has a certificate or a signature on it. And uh, you'll see it actually up here in the main, in the main information about the project. Uh, in fact, you see it, uh, let's see, you know, this is an old project type, so and it's on my computer where I built it. If you get a message on there, it means that this project was signed because it was done on my Xcode version that I did with um, with a signature certificate on it, so it can't be copied. So if you have problems loading up the um, finished app, it means you have to de-sign it, de take the certificate out of it. And you'll see the error message. You click on the error message and you remove the certificate from it and then it, the error will go away if you get that error message. The other thing we didn't do, and you can poss possibly figure out how to do it on your own, is in your puzzle, I'm going to open up the puzzle here, because we have all of the images inside of the, um, of the app. Um, here, actually, let me move this out and get rid of this view here. We can set one of them to be the app icon if we want to. So if I hit on the puzzle here, and I come down to the bottom, I can see I can restrict, let's say for example, the um, I can restrict the uh, portrait, the landscape, and then for the app icon from the application itself, I can use images to set the app icon for the project. Um, you used to be able to drag it over actually, launch image, so you don't use. Uh, let's see. Here we go. If I click on the little arrow, I can open it up, and I can actually because I have some images in here. I can take happy and drag it over and put it for the app icon as an example here. And uh, there we go. We'll just put it in here so that when I run it um, and I go back, you can see it'll show my picture image of my puzzle, completed puzzle, um, for the app icon on the emulator. So you can't actually see it on this one, so I'm going to close this one. And I'll show you what it looks like on this one here. Um, so on the finished product, on the one you download, the older product, older project, if you run it on the older simulation, you can see the app icon, actually. I'm sure there's probably a way of seeing it on the newer 7.0. Uh, but let's see. Oops, I think I may have stopped it. Here it goes. So the puzzle's out here. And then... Uh, no, I don't have the app icon set. That's actually kind of funny. That's the touch control. <laughs> so let me see. Let me set the app, app icon so you can see it. Ah, it's going to complain about my source, isn't it? Uh, it worked on the older one, and the image is not going to work on the newer. So, or it's not going to work on the project brought up in the newer Xcode version. But the original product actually worked just fine. Uh, if I migrate it back over, I have to migrate it over to the Retina version of the app for iOS 7. So, One of the problems with dealing with older app uh, project types 
is that compatibility. And for some strange reason, Apple always wants you to upgrade. So if you're already upgraded, you can't go backwards, which is kind of the problem with that. So this isn't going to let me run it. Uh, not going to let me set the app icon unless I upgrade the app, migrate it over to the new, new version. So we'll just leave that one alone then. Uh, on your newer iOS 7 apps, you can go ahead and uh, put your icon on there, and it'll show up on your it'll show up on your app itself. Uh, let me stop the video. I'm going to go take a look at it.